Stay tuned to PBS 39 for an all new episode of Focus, Full Steam Ahead, featuring science, technology, engineering, art, and math. If you think laboratories are all filled with beakers and microscopes, think again. At Northampton Community College, the Fab Lab gives students the tech tools they need to bring their ideas to life. While at the Da Vinci Science Center, the Inventors Lab encourages kids to create products and in some cases, seek patents. These stories, plus a new school in Allentown, puts technology right in students' hands starting in kindergarten. Learn more about CAI Learning Academy right now on Focus. Focus is for our community. Focus showcases the people, the places, and the issues that matter to you. Focus on what matters. You never know what you're going to see when you tune into Focus. Support for Focus is provided by Univest, Banking Insurance Investments, Fellowship Community, Continuing Care with Spirit, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laura McHugh. On this episode of Focus, we wrap up our four-part series, Full Steam Ahead, featuring science, technology, engineering, art, and math. We begin in a place where you can see entrepreneurs using all five of those fields, sometimes at the same time. For years, the Fab Lab at Northampton Community College has provided public access to equipment and technology most people don't normally have the opportunity to use. Focus contributor Sarah Madonna takes us to one of the region's original makerspaces. Welcome to the Fab Lab. Where if you can think it, you can build it. A lot of people say, oh, fabulous lab, right? But uh, it's actually a fabrication lab. Located at Northampton Community College, this fab lab opened its doors more than five years ago. Its goal, to give anyone the opportunity to access technology to turn their ideas into reality. It was all to help people, you know, normal people who just don't have access to those avenues and never have, have an access. It's an opening point for people to come up with an idea and make it happen. Jeff Berner took over as the program manager five years ago. Back then, the Fab Lab had some basic equipment and attracted a handful of people. Berner wanted to take it to the next level and offer basic skill courses that would allow anyone to learn a new trade and create products. I was struggling like crazy to try to get just a woodworking class filled up. I started an email list, which now has grown from, say, five people in the very first semester. We're now up to almost 1,600 people in our email list. In five years, Berner says the Fab Lab has gone from four to 84 courses that include 3D printing, laser cutting, robotics, electronics. This is an amplifier that was designed by one of our instructors. Woodworking and guitar making. To keep up with the demand, his staff has grown from two instructors to 22. Our woodworking teacher was just on the cover of Woodcraft magazine. Um, or Michael Brawley, who's a renowned uh, artist and woodturner who has a piece in the National Gallery. The night of our visit, Brawley was eager to show off his latest work, the Fab Lab Martian, an electronic guitar outfitted with its own light show. We also met Tobar the Great. <laughs> A six-foot robot controlled by the electronics in this glove. Tobar can move its crane up and down and grip objects like the stuffed animal. Tobar makes the rounds of fairs throughout the country. But it was built to demonstrate all the different things that we do here at the Fab Lab. So the gripper here has 3D printing and cast elements to it. We have a lot of machining that was done for carbon fiber and for aluminum. We have woodwork for these end caps. As impressive as these innovative machines are, you don't have to be an engineer or inventor to enjoy what the Fab Lab has to offer. Berner says as the volume of students continues to grow, he's seeing a change in the demographics as well. When he first started, retired men were the main students walking in the door. Now he's seeing a range from teenagers to seniors. He's also seeing an increase in women. As a kid, when everybody else was taking home ec, I was in the wood shop. 
D. Elliott says she's been coming to the Fab Lab now for about 18 months and loves the wood shop. She's already completed a number of projects and is now working on her first guitar. I played as a young person and rather than buy one, I thought it'd be really nice to make one. For Elliott and many who come to the Fab Lab, they're coming to do more than just create and sharpen their skills. It's a form of stress relief. With the work that I do all day, it's, a, it's relaxing. It's a real release from the rest of my day and at the end of it I mean, you have something, something that you've made and it's exciting. The Fab Lab is open six days a week and Burner encourages anyone to check it out. He says plans are in the works to move it from the corner of the third floor of the Fowler Family Southside Center to the entire first floor after renovations. I tell everyone I know about it because this is a gem that lots of places don't have. This is really unusual and one that the college hopes will continue to shine for many years to come. For Focus, I'm Sarah Madonna reporting. Thank you, Sarah. We now go from the Fab Lab to the Inventors Lab, a program for kids in grades four to eight at the Da Vinci Science Center in Allentown. For more, here's Focus reporter Grover Silcox. Thanks, Laura. The Da Vinci Science Center Inventors Lab gives kids a chance to showcase their best ideas. And at the end of the program, one of their inventions is even considered for a U.S. provisional patent application. The students draw inspiration from a variety of professionals they meet throughout the eight-month program. Here's a look inside the Inventors Lab. Turn your wrist. Turn your wrist. Nice. These kids walk in the footsteps of Ben Franklin, Thomas Edison, and Leonardo da Vinci as members of the Da Vinci Science Center's Inventors Lab program. The reason I got interested in Inventors Lab program is because I go to the Da Vinci Science Center a lot and I love science. Students from grades four to eight participate in the program. Once a month for eight months, they develop a product idea with advisors at the Da Vinci Science Center. Ultimately, one idea is chosen to develop and patent. There are over 300 different science museums in the United States, and we're the only one in the United States that actually gets a kid a U.S. patent. Since the program's inception in 2007, one student has earned a U.S. patent, and two others have provisional patents. The way we train the new generation of surgeons, especially in laparoscopy, is with trainers, and that's what we have there. Today, the kids take a break from working on their ideas to learn about the latest medical technology and inventions from gastric surgeons and a general surgery resident from St. Luke's University Health Network. Every year, we bring our simulators to the uh, Science Center. We basically show them how surgeons train on becoming skilled in uh, minimally invasive surgery. The simulators feature a camera and a grabbing device which the operator uses to see and manipulate objects. And now when I do that, I can lift the apple and then I can move the apple here. The young inventors got a hands-on experience with this innovative technology, the way physicians do to train for laparoscopic surgery. In laparoscopic surgery, the surgeon inserts instruments through tiny holes in the patient's abdomen to perform the operation. This eliminates the need to make a big incision. It was really hard, but I did okay. It took me 18 seconds to pick up the, it was actually like a little apple that I had pick up with a needle. The kids competed with one another for speed and efficiency in transferring objects inside the simulator. And it takes uh, precision, it takes uh, speed, and also takes a, a kind of hand-eye coordination. And that's what we were trying to show the kids, how to perform these uh, skills uh, using both hands by looking at the monitor instead of whatever you do with your fingers or your hand gets translated into the robot so that instrument essentially acts just like your hand we got like a mini contest kind of thing where you like whoever can move the things the fastest with the robotic arms in the camera got a small prize I got second on one of them 18 year old William Schaff shared his experiences with the Inventors Lab students on this day. As a member of the center's first Inventors Lab class, he had devised a windmill battery charger for solar-paneled vehicles that would allow a solar car to operate at night. 
He was also the first student to have his idea chosen by Da Vinci's panel of experts for a U.S. patent application. I spent a whole year, more than a year of my life, working on this, and it's something that I can, I can say I firmly accomplished. William developed his ideas with help from the engineers and professionals who still work with the kids in the current inventor's lab. I'd like to become an engineer and um, hopefully build all the things that people say, oh, that's crazy, and make things that seem impossible. I really am pleased that you had an opportunity to learn your first step. And the purpose of doing this today is to show the kids how inventing new technology and uh, pushing the envelope and changing the way things are will have a huge impact on their lives and the lives of others. And that's also the mission of the Da Vinci Science Center and its Inventors Lab. For Focus, I'm Grover Silcox reporting. Thank you, Grover. In our next story, we focus on technology and how it's now incorporated into education starting in kindergarten and first grade. Focus reporter Brittany Garzillo joins us now to explain how one new school in Allentown makes it happen. Brittany. Laura, CAI Learning Academy in Allentown offers technology-infused instruction in elementary school. Since September of 2014, the schools put Apple iPads in the hands of each and every student. Take a look. Inside these kindergarten and first grade classrooms, school subjects like reading, writing, and arithmetic involve the Apple iPad what's to them a toy, but we all see it as an instructional tool for them. Which one that has more and it is a A tool used to infuse technology into the classroom. An idea at the core of CAI Learning Academy in Allentown. The goal is to in, uh, in a very small way, kind of re-engineer education, um, specifically here in the Lehigh Valley. Here, every kid has their own iPad, a rarity for an inner city school. We wanted to try something different, um, be a little bit innovative, and focus on the specific needs of our students. Jessica Devlin has served as the school's director of education since it opened in September of 2014. You're going to see technology kind of seamlessly infused into what we're doing, from the iPads to the TVs. The private school was founded by Tony Salvaggio, the president and CEO of Computer Aid Inc. in Allentown, and currently serves kindergarten and first grade students. While the tuition is $4,000 a year, Devlin says a majority of the school's 53 students enrolled receive scholarships. I don't know that, you know, in many situations in Allentown that you might be able to walk into a whole day kindergarten that has 15 students. S-A-I-D, say, say, say. On this day, head teacher Jill Rothenberger utilizes the classroom's 60-inch TV to teach a lesson to her kindergarten class made up of no more than 15 students. Every grade level has a 60-inch television, and oftentimes you may walk into either a kindergarten or first grade classroom, you might see a teacher using that TV as a teaching or instructional tool to maybe introduce a lesson. Good. These full-day kindergartners continue their reading lesson independently on their iPads using a web-based reading program called Imagination Station. Some of them are working on comprehension work, some of them are working on fluency, some of them are working on sight words, some of them are working on phonics skills. It depends on where they are in the program. During the activity, Rothenberger monitors student progress on her laptop. I'm able to see what they are being asked, how long it is taking them to answer the questions. Um, and again, especially those students who might be struggling, this is a great tool for me to use to then pull them into small group and provide intervention. Our focus is to provide students with a holistic education, very much rooted in the belief that our students can be learning independently and advancing their reading and math skills, so they're reading and performing math two grade levels above their current grade level. We very much strive to provide our students with a lot of enrichment opportunities to help get them there. Oh, show me how you line up like leaders. With iPads in hand, the class heads downstairs for hands-on learning. One of the things that we really recognize is that all of our students learn in very different capacities, whether it's a teacher standing in front of the classroom directly speaking to them, uh, or it's reading something on a piece of paper, or it's the iPads. Each of them is engaged in a different way. Here, students use an app called Imagination Playground to design a structure 
before assembling it in real life with oversized building blocks. We're trying to get the ball in a hole that can keep it in there. Has it happened yet? Not yet. Our vision down the line is to see our students you know, designing a structure, creating it, and even using their iPad, creating instructions for other students to take and build off of what they've already designed. Try to get that ball all the way. Back upstairs. Five double. Ten. Students in this first grade classroom work on math skills. Exactly. When you subtract, you have the big number in front. Both independently and in group instruction. See if you can find the related fact. They're learning about technology, they're learning how to use it properly, um, but they're also able to work independently, but they're also able to work with, with their classmates. According to Devlin, the school recently submitted an application to add a second grade and hopes to continue adding grade levels in the future. But for now... My hope is that we're setting our, our students up for a really successful future and teaching them what it means to dream big and work hard by putting technology in every student's hands. For Focus, I'm Brittany Garzillo, reporting. Thank you, Brittany. When I first saw this story, it did remind me a bit of the Newton School, which you covered shortly after it opened in fall of 2014. That's right. The Newton School opened at the same time as CAI Learning Academy, but it's a STEM-focused preschool developed by Community Services for Children. Here's a Focus flashback to the Newton School. We're going to try to make these now three-dimensional. At the Newton School in East Allentown, there's something different in the way these children build towers, stack blocks, and paint shapes. What really makes it different is instead of taking a language and literacy-based approach to learning, the Newton School takes a STEM approach to learning. Do you think you could build your loop from your blueprint? And it's a flat and it's two-dimensional. Can you make it a structure now? Here, four-year-old Nelson takes his artwork, or blueprint, from the design station to the designated engineering area, where he uses foam blocks to build a structure. You just made your blueprint into a structure. Named after the achievements of Sir Isaac Newton, the Newton School uses STEM topics, science, technology, engineering, and math as its focus for hands-on pre-K learning. Studies show us that in specifically in those areas that we are going to have a workforce shortfall and that we need to begin now to start to help children want to choose careers in science, technology, engineering, and math for their success. It's project-based and it's hands-on and everything interrelates. Good morning. Rhonda Lynch, the school's lead teacher, has more than 25 years of teaching experience and helps oversee all 20 of the four-year-old students. On this day, she and her co-workers start off with a song. My heart says thanks. Bum, 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 bum. My heart says thanks. And snack before breaking into three small groups, science, design, and engineering. Oh, what happened? We're doing flimsy sturdy. Why will it fall? Why will it break? In the design area, learning what a blueprint is and how to create a design. And everything is hands-on so they really can comprehend and understand and play and experiment. Located on the Donnelly Children's Campus in Allentown, the Newton School's pilot class was launched by Community Services for Children, a local nonprofit that provides free early childhood education to low-income families across the region. In addition to the Newton School, CSC provides various programs like Head Start, Early Head Start, Pre-K Counts, the Keystone Stars, and subsidies for child care. The teachers aren't teaching from a thousand foot level and trying to spoon feed them information. Instead, those teachers are at the three foot level and they're sitting at the tables with them, they're engaged with them, they're learning together, they're walking through the methods and the processes together as joint learners um, and discovering along the way. For four and a half hours a day, 180 days a year, these toddlers explore all areas of the classroom those designated as science, technology, engineering, and math, along with areas such as library and art, 
which incorporates STEM concepts. They're pulling in language and literacy, they're pulling in art, they're pulling in social studies, but it's through the use of the engineering process, the scientific method, and the integration of technology across the board. With a grant from PPL, Community Services for Children has also launched a STEM training series for pre-K teachers in hopes of developing more STEM-related preschools around the region. That would be our hope, um, that more and more preschools and more and more daycare um, centers would involve children in the STEM process so that their excitement will build and, and we can uh, move forward with creating more scientists and engineers. While some of the students are still working on pronouncing words like science and engineering. Can you say engineering? Engineering. Those at the Newton School feel it's important to provide the building blocks for STEM concepts in early childhood, something that they say is one of a kind in the Lehigh Valley. Research has shown that children really should be engaged at this age to build that excitement, that when you start to engage children in a middle school or a high school level, they're already disengaged from the subject matter. We want a strong Lehigh Valley, and having a strong Lehigh Valley means having a strong workforce, and it starts at the age of four an innovative Lehigh Valley preschool that's building the foundation Whoa. for future success. For Focus, I'm Brittany Garzillo reporting. Thank you, Brittany. Our Focus Full Steam Ahead series is just one part of a larger science and arts initiative at the station. It also includes a new education program called Create With Me. Take a look. PBS 39 has partnered with the Bethlehem Area Public Library to present Create With Me, a new arts and crafts program for kids ages 2 to 8. Children work with Pennsylvania certified teachers to create one-of-a-kind artwork that they can then take home. Workshops take place the third Saturday of the month and alternate between the south side and main branches. It's all part of PBS 39's Full Steam Ahead initiative, an early childhood education program that combines science, technology, engineering, art, and math activities to engage young children and their parents. You can register for an upcoming session of Create With Me at BAPL.org. So as we said, this episode wraps up that four-part series, and while we've been talking about STEM for years, 10 years or more, the new edition of the A in STEAM has had a lot of people rethinking how arts fit into this area. Right. Yeah, I think it's great that it's been included because, uh, you know, all of those subjects together, you know, make you a, a whole person. And, and it's, it's really important. And I think that they're emphasizing it for that reason. And we really covered a lot of topics, um, you know, throughout the month, especially I know I found interest a lot in the women in science with Da Vinci Science Center. Right. I mean, it just today we saw children using Apple iPads, and I know some of them could work them better than I could. Um, so it's really interesting to see, you know, as technology grows, so does that growth in, in young people and children. Right. And I think including that A really brings out the creativity that has always been involved in STEAM. I mean, engineering and science and technology, that are, those are highly creative fields, but yet for years we didn't hear as much about that creativity element. And I think we saw a great example of that today in the Fab Lab package. I mean, we right. saw them creating guitars, I mean, making these things. Um, it's, it is a very creative process and it involves a lot of science behind it. Right, and then the young uh, young inventors over at the Da Vinci uh, Science Center, uh, you know, are just wow you. I mean, I, it's even hard to keep up a conversation with them because they are just so far ahead and so creative. And even the doctors from St. Luke's who were there said, uh, you know, these kids, they ask great questions, they're really smart, and they're, they're very creative. And, uh, you know, that portends well for the future, I think. And I was glad we got to see the student who had participated years before and came right. back. Right. Yeah. Well, it took a while to get the patent, and and he is the one now that that has it. There are two heading in that direction, and who knows uh, this this round that's going on now, who will come out of that? But uh, to come up with a uh, you know a, a new turbine design that uh, you know uh, powers a car uh, at night, you know, so it doesn't need solar panel, you know, it doesn't need the sun to uh, operate. I mean, It'll, it'll be interesting to see where he goes in the future and what he does in the next 10 years. Sure will. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you, Grover. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here soon for Focus Start With Art. Until then, remember to focus on what matters.